In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of efficiency. Most of you probably have an idea about efficiency if you've ever owned a vehicle. How many miles per gallon you get out of your car will be an example of efficiency. The formal equation for efficiency is going to be the output divided by the input multiplied by 100. For our purposes, we can talk about the mechanical energy that's being expended divided by the metabolic energy, and we can multiply that by 100 in order to get our idea of efficiency. So efficiency can go anywhere from 0 to 100%, at least theoretically that is. We will soon see that no activity will be 100% efficient. Let's look at the example of a pinky ball. When I drop that pinky ball, it's going to rebound off the ground, but it's never going to go back to its initial height. And eventually it's going to settle down to the ground. Why is that? That's because any exchange is going to involve a loss of energy. Where does that energy go? That energy gets lost in terms of heat. And the point that I want to make here is that no activity is going to be 100% efficient. This essentially is going to be the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics tells us that any process, any work process, is going to involve both a change of energy as well as energy that gets lost in the form of heat. Let's shift our focus now to talking about the energetics of gait and how that might relate to efficiency. First, let's look at the center of mass trajectory during walking gait. During walking gait, the center of mass is going to be at its low point at initial contact. It's going to raise up to its high point during mid-stance, and then it's going to go back to its low point again at toe-off. So the red arrow here is going to represent the trajectory of the center of mass during walking gait. During running gait, we are going to see the opposite effect. The center of mass is going to be at its high point at initial contact. It's going to drop at its low point at mid-stance, and then it's going to be at its high point again at toe-off. So that is the center of mass trajectory for running gait. So what I'm going to ask you to do, and we are going to discuss this in class, is to draw the linear kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy curves for both walking and running gait. And then I'm going to ask you to say what you can say when you compare those two. And to give you a big hint, I want you to think about what the velocity of that center of mass is going to be during the stance phase of gait. That is an additional piece of information that you are going to need in order to accurately construct these curves. And that is our brief introduction to efficiency.